Hi, Ryan. Ryan. Hi, can everybody hear me? Hi, everyone. Yes, I hear you. Yes. I hear you. Here we go. Can you hear me, Ryan? Yep, I can hear you, David. OK, good. Thank you. Is, is Mary coming to this? Yep, I'm going to bring Mary in right now and then I'm going to start going live on YouTube and then Jane, I'll give you the signal that you can start reading um, the, the big long thing we have to read. Okay. Okay. I'm here too. I'm just going back and printing the budget and stuff. Oh, and then Janet, I yep. wanted to let you know I modified the minutes with the roll call vote, but I didn't send it out to anybody. <laughs> I have to do that. And then um, we have the joint <laughs> capital ready to go too. So I'm gonna send you guys both sets of minutes, but we had a, we already had a correction on the, um, the minutes I sent out, so. Okay. okay. I believe we're live on YouTube. Okay. Yes. Should I start reading? You're, yeah, hold on, you're hearing me on YouTube. You have to call to order first. Yeah, okay, you guys are good to go on my end now. Okay. Okay, I'm calling to order the Town of Southboro meeting of the Library Board of Trustees, February 16th, 2021, 11 a.m. via remote participation. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law GLC 30 section 18 and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Southboro Library Board of Trustees will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town of Southboro's website at southboroughtown.com. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the meeting may do so in the following manner, southboroughtown.com slash remote meetings. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on Southboro's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And then do I do a roll call? Is that next? Yeah. All right. Um, um, uh, I'm here, uh, Trustee Davis, um, Trustee, who's next, Reagan? Reagan, um, present. Oh, Trustee Eckberg? Yes, I'm here. Yes, Donnie? You're muted, Amy. She's muted. Here. And uh, Trustee Maney? Here. 
Okay, all, all attending. Should we review the minutes of the meeting for January 26th first, or do you wanna to jump to Mary? So, well, there, there's, um, let me just do two housekeeping things, if that's okay. That's fine. For clarity for the minutes, if you guys wanna to decide today who makes a motion and then who seconds the motion for the votes, um, it might make sense, Jane, for you to make the motion and then Janet, if you wanted to second, because um, you do have to take a vote on the budget. So that's just a um, friendly housekeeping reminder. And then- So we want to we want to review the revised minutes. Is that what you're saying? But you didn't revise the budget, though. No, the budget you got sent is the is the budget we have. The minutes. There was a, a Marguerite and Janet both brought to my attention that um, the the way that votes are done in the minutes should also be reflective of how you're doing it in the meetings. It should be a roll call. So there is a revised set of minutes. If you guys have additional corrections for the minutes though, you, I, would, I would advise you to go over them now. And then if you wanna make a motion and approved as amended, you can do that. Okay, so I should open discussion on the minutes for the last meeting of January 26th. Comments? Anyone? Sorry, my dog. Um, so the only revisions would be to add in the um, roll call listing of the trustees' names. So I move that we approve the minutes. The, I move that we approve the revised minutes of the meeting on January 26, 2021. Second. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I'll inf let's see. Trustee <laughs> Eckford. Aye. Trustee Reagan. Aye. Trustee Maney. Aye. Trustee Azdani. Aye. And uh, I say aye. So the uh, revised minutes for the meeting of January 26th are um, as amended are accepted. Is that right? Yep. Awesome job, Jane. <laughs> okay. So now should we move to Mary or do you want to go to the director's report? Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, let's start with Mary so that she can um, probably move on to another big construction project. You're back outside in the rain, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> the hard head hair and the whole... <laughs> Um, so um, the project is moving rather slow and now the weather is hindering us even more. It's not costing the town any more money. We're not giving them any additional general conditions for supervision or anything. We have requested that management from the roofing company attend this week's meeting because we haven't been happy with their, um, the amount of manpower they've been sending. There have been way too many gaps in, the, in the, their presence on site. So they will be here <clears throat> Thursday at our regular weekly meeting to discuss the issue and see how they can expedite the finishing up the edges of the roof. We did have a leak um, over the break room that the contractor will own repairing. The leak, um, we're not sure what caused it yet. So we're, we're waiting for um, a determination of that from the management person also. And then we'll just, once we know the leak has been properly Rectified, we will have them repair the inside of the library. There's some damage to the roof and the wall, not a, uh, the ceiling and the wall, not a huge amount, but it does need to be repaired. Um, other than that, we're moving along. The storm windows still aren't on site. We knew they were gonna be a long lead time due to COVID. So they're still on schedule sometime in March. So, and hopefully we'll see them. The abatement was supposed to start today, but due to the rain, I spoke to the owner of the company last night he will let us know again tonight if they're coming tomorrow. It's all, it's weather dependent. They're gonna be outside on ladders abating the windows or, you know. Um, and that's not holding anything up because we, that needs to be done before the storm windows get put on. So they've got time to bounce around on the good days. Other than that, Ryan's getting sick of seeing construction people all over his, his library. <laughs> Is there any questions or? What, what is an abatement? It's removal of a hazardous material. So the original caulking on the windows contained a, a recordable amount of asbestos. So we have a, a, a licensed hygienist that will be witnessing the work and we'll be making sure that the material is removed of properly. So there's no uh, risk to the employees or residents. It will, um, it, it will be um, taken care of and monitored properly. Okay, thank you. Mary, the leak, 
It scares me when I hear that word. The leak, is this in a new place or a place where we had issues before? Ryan, I think you had some water there before, but not recently. Water had come in oh, over a year ago in the same place. So okay. I would not describe this as a new issue. It was a minimal amount of water. Um, when it happened a year ago, this was much more significant. So it was, this did happen the week before the drains were snaked. Right. And now the drains should be clear. So we are, um, we have not noticed, right? Got to knock on the desk when I say this, any additional water in the past 24 hours. So that is a good sign, right? Because we're getting a significant amount of rain right now. Yeah, today is a good test. So there's, there were two places we were looking, Ryan's correct. One was the drains. Because if you remember, we had water infiltrating Ryan's office on the other side, symmetrically the same, and the drain was clogged. But we, we caught that before the new roof went on. So now this side, um, the drains were clean this week. The other thing is, is it's right where the old building meets the new building, even though that room is new. So we want to get up there on the roof on a safe day, weather day, and check the flashing and um, where it meets the new building. So we want to look at everything. What's the plan for going forward for managing, um, you know, making sure those drains are cleared? Like whose responsibility is that passed to this construction? I think that would be facilities. Probably John Parent will have something on his schedule. You know, he you will maintain a regular. Thing. Yeah, sorry, Mary. He'll maintain a regular maintenance schedule, Kim, where he'll um, periodically probably have a vendor come out. We're already doing regular maintenance now on the sump pumps that were installed after the flood. So this will just be added to the maintenance schedule for facilities. So. Great, thanks. And they should be watched. The, the two low roofs have overhanging trees and that's what the branches, the leaves, that, that the fallout gets stuck, you know, with the wind pushing around ends up catching in the drains. The big issue is of course roof access because we can't access the roof ourselves without having a ladder physically brought to the library. So we'll probably, I mean, I would assume we check these before <laughs> freezing temperatures next year in the fall. I can try to um, touch base with John and see what, um, what type of time frame we're looking at. If it's an annual check, if it's more than that. Mm -hmm. And is there a plan in the spring for addressing the overhanging trees just to reduce the debris that ends up? That is, that's a thing for Karen. So I can talk with DPW and see if we can follow up with them. Um, Karen does periodically trim trees. This might not be on our radar because I don't think we've ever talked about uh, branches that hang over the library. So this might be, she's gotta be here to install that solar powered bench we got with the grant last year. And there's, there's actually a number of things I think DPW will be checking in with in the spring. So this can, we can add this to the list. Yeah, I don't think they're technically hanging totally over, but what happened, you know, in the fall when leaves are falling and the wind blows them, they're ending up there. Because the, the clog that was in Ryan's side um, was all tree debris. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Questions for Mary? <laughs> Do we wanna just touch base about potential time frame for completion? Because I know that's been a question. I think it's going to be the end of March, the way the way the weather's hitting us now. They missed they missed the window. So, so I'm telling you guys April, even though yeah. I'm scared. And it's all on that, it's all on the contractor. You know, they the roofer started two weeks late. So that's not our problem that he's not done and now he's gonna, you know, be there longer. That's their problem. The weather has caused them to be here less days during the week than right. they are actually on site. So that's kind of unavoidable. Yeah. Mary, do, do financial penalties kick in after a, a certain date, such as the last day of March? Um, no, there is some language in the spec, but with a project like this, you have to prove that there was a hardship and the library is closed. You're still operating. We haven't affected your operation. Those penalties usually come in if um, you're renting another space because you're under construction and you have to rent it longer. Um, those type, or you're storing material somewhere and you're paying for that longer storage. We don't have any physical hardship to say here, you're going to have to pay for this now. Okay, thank you. Okay. So 
I guess we say thank you, Mary, and move on. Thank you. Hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the director's report. Ryan, do you want to speak to the budget? Sure. So I did give a little notice. I, I re-upped my Massachusetts Library Association membership, and we did go $43 over budget on professional development. So in the report, I noted that that still washes out with the travel money. Mm -hmm. um, so we won't be doing any more professional development expenditures. So that line item is essentially um, complete now. Okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody had any questions. I still feel like we're on good track for educational supplies. We're spending a lot more because a lot more books are being published um, that we're purchasing now. Mm -hmm. um, also looking at some potential overdrive purchases at the end of the year, similar to what we did last year if there's an overage. Um, we did not get the uh, ALA grant and I am gonna try to reapply, but I would say I'm not optimistic. I noted that in the report. So one of the options we do have is if there's enough money in the budget at the end of the year and we wanted to, um, we wanted to purchase consumer reports through EBSCO and provide electronic access to that, we could. So that might be something I bring up to you guys in May or June because that's been an or a request and something that I would like to add. But then it's, it's trying to, recurringly pay for it the next year, which is gonna be the issue. Um, Cause we didn't budget for it. Okay. Other than that, I think we're good. There's, we're gonna have, um, I did talk to the town accountant. There was a question from, I believe one of the selectmen on how much money we're gonna turn back as far as salaries. Mm -hmm. I don't have a figure yet. I don't really like to start doing projections until around May, I would say early May, because at that point we have two months left of the fiscal year. What I can tell you is at this point, it's a pretty significant amount of money because the payrolls are averaging a little over 15,000 every two weeks. So you can kind of extrapolate what the math is going to be. But again, you know, we're going to be doing more outdoor programming in the next couple months. So there might be an opportunity for part-time staff members to start getting more hours, whether or not they're covering the curbside operations inside or they're assisting with programming outside. So I don't really, until we get closer to the date, I'm not comfortable giving you an estimate. Okay. I hope that's okay. Yes, that's okay. Um, that's it. Any questions? Oh, Not on expenses, but I'm, you're going to talk about next year's budget. Yeah, we're, I, we're going to. I'm going to finish the director's report if that's okay, uh, Janet. And then um, I want to do the budget as like a completely separate item. Okay. Because I, I think it warrants that. Um, but that's so we're good this year. So that's kind of the expense report part in the director's report, if that's okay. So. So should we move on? Yeah. Um, facilities, I did talk to John for a while. We had a good conversation about putting, um, I know we talked about this in the last meeting, putting sort of um, casing or grates over the thermostats. Yeah. And I believe John has ordered something. He warned us that they are not the most attractive things in the world. So I'm readying you guys for that. Um, he did note that he's able to do settings for the thermostat and he has made it so they can only be modified within four degrees. So they go from 68 degrees to 72 degrees. And then if we have to modify it, we have to put in a request for the facilities. So even if the grates are not on all of them or there are in some public areas, it's not like somebody can you know, turn it down to 60 or something. They, they're not, they don't have the ability to do that. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, copy machine, I've done everything I can at this point. I need to check with Brian about the uh, credit card payment, but I believe we can actively use the copy machine now if we want to. So they are gonna, Canon is gonna schedule at some point a tutorial to have a, a person come out and give the staff members like just a little mini, this is how this copy machine works. And it is similar to the one we had, but there are some notable differences, including the fact that it collects like the dust from the ink and that needs to be emptied. And then I 
leave a piece needs to be reordered. So that's that's one example of how it's a little bit different. So the management behind the machine is different. So it's been fun. I mean, a, a lot of my time has been spent on, on the copy machine in the past couple months, as you can imagine. Uh, we talked about the leaf. Now it's there, though. That's exciting. Yes. Yeah. And we have it set up. It's now set up in the DVD area because it always kind of jutted out in front oh. of the elevator. So mm -hmm. um, we did that because the network connections were a little bit better um, over where we had it. So we're going to try it out. We can always move it back over to where it was if we don't like it where it is. But when, once you start having patrons inside, see the traffic flow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's nice because you can kind of go when you're not, you, when you're making copies, because sometimes people are making copies of like resumes or personal documents. This is, you're not like in the main walkway of the library going to circulation. Now it's almost like in that little DVD nook. So it's still in a place where people browse, but I kind of like it because it's a little bit more, I don't want to say discreet, but it's like, it's, you're not right where people walk in. Yeah. Okay. We'll see how that goes once you actually have open the library. Okay. Um, as far as the service updates, we're very exciting news. Um, and I sent out a, a notice this morning as of, it was really at 11 o'clock because that's when you could schedule your first online appointment. But if you get notifications about holds, you can now log into your account and you can schedule a curbside pickup online. So I believe we've had one patron do this so far and the rest have been the staff testing it as tutorials to show each other how to use the system. Um, so we will hopefully have more examples of this, but if people are watching from home and they get um, notifications about holds online, you know how to log into your account. You'll see a little tab now in, in your account settings that says curbside. You can click on that and you can schedule a pickup. That's, That's great. awesome. That's yeah. great. It will save you a lot of staff hours making all those phone calls. And then we, Pat and I are convinced we've gotten more food in the last two weeks than we got in the last two years from the Love Your Library campaign. So we, we had them pick it up um, on Thursday morning. And then we got another donation that was almost exactly the amount that they picked up. And it was like a full book cart worth of items. So I think we're getting like, I think it's individual people are donating significantly more than they, than they did in any prior year. And I would, I would just note, this is the only year we haven't incentivized the program because we're waiving fines anyway because of the building being closed. So people really are doing this out of the kindness of their hearts. And it is, I don't know, I think it's really great that people are donating this much and participating in the program. So we may look at doing another partnership with the food pantry at some point in the summer. Because Pat and I have talked about that before, so. Summer is when they need it. Yeah, we, we're gonna keep in touch with Barbara and um, you know, see, see if there's a need and then uh, go from there. Okay. And then honestly, I usually have good news about grants, but I feel like the whole back half of the director's report is talking about grants we didn't get. So um, it does look like there are some other funding sources I can look at uh, for some of the projects we wanted to fund. And then if we don't get funding for them, we don't get funding for them. That's how that works, so. I should note that the SCAC is going to fund, it looks like the ukulele programs, they were supportive of that in their meetings. They just need to let everybody appeal the decisions before they send out the grant notices. So until we get um, notification that we're awarded the grant, we're not going to schedule the programs. So there'll be a little bit of a delay. And then we, we haven't really, we need to notify the SEF because they were gonna give us money to purchase physical ukuleles to circulate. So the timeline is just pushed out. It's looking more and more like it's gonna be a summer program, which I think might work out better anyway. Yeah, okay. Can you do that in person then, like outside? It's possible. We will talk to the, the vendor who is gonna yeah. run the program. It might have to be a limited number, which that's gonna be the song I think we keep singing about the programming. We're gonna yeah. have to have a registration cap. But yes, we will, we're going to explore as many in-person programming avenues, Amy, as we can, because I think Kim and I are very interested in that. And that will include not just children's programs, but potentially adult programs too. 
So. I think across the board, everybody's sick of interacting online. So if we can get outside and do things, it'd be great. I should note too that I did have a conversation with um, the the editor of my South Borough. She had asked if we were going to potentially host any public forums prior to town meeting because we've done that in the past. Um, so we will look at if we can feasibly do any of that outside or if it even makes sense to partner with like REC and do it at NERI if we think there's a significant amount of interest. What I can say is when we typically, we did do a couple of um, interest meetings, I would say about the lighting bylaw. And I know we had a, um, like a little um, information sheet that we put up about the noise bylaw that are, I think gonna both be on the warrant for this year. And we, we, we had some people who came and who were interested in those, but not like a significant number, I would say. So I think we could feasibly probably do them on the library lawn. So we might look at options for that. Okay, that would be fun. Like it. Um, do we wanna talk a little bit about the library interior renovations or is that, did Mary sort of? So the, the, that's the capital item. So this was what um, we did the joint meeting with the Capital Planning Committee about on mm -hmm. February 8th. So the update is really that there is no update. Um, I don't believe that Capital took a vote on um, any of the items yet. I believe they're waiting to hear back from advisory and the selectmen. So because we're still pretty early in the, we were, we were when it was in March, late in the town meeting process and now we're early because <laughs> it's going to probably be scheduled for the summer, right? So I think they are still looking at what um, what can sort of be shifted or deferred. I, I will say thank you all for coming to that meeting on February 8th, so I can publicly say that. You guys, um, I think, made the difference in letting them know that this needs to happen. So um, they were they were unanimously supportive in I that. Think they were the attitude, especially after you said that rugs never been cleaned in thirty years. That they were, they were <laughs> on board with. <laughs> I I let John say that, but I can tell you that it hasn't been cleaned. <laughs> so he, he was not wrong. <laughs> no, that was that was good for them to know that. Was I think that was the most important piece of information because the thing isn't in rags or anything, but. It's, the fact that it can't be clean and it has that much traffic is disgusting. <laughs> right. And the one who had small children sitting on it, I think that made yeah. a big impact. So it seemed positively um, inclined, I thought, but we'll see. So I will keep you posted if I hear anything from Mr. Malinowski or, um, you know, in, in one of the meetings, but it did seem like everybody, everybody on Capitol at least was very supportive of this happening next year. So I, I feel strongly that it'll probably appear on the town meeting warrant under the capital items. Okay, that's good. Um, so should we move on? Teen librarian job description follow up from personnel board meeting, which was in January. Yes, yeah, so Marguerite and I went to the personnel board meeting last week um, where we had a number of library issues. <laughs> so there was, um, I had the tuition reimbursement request, which because I was after the deadline, they decided not to um, reopen the tuition reimbursement. But as I noted in the director's report, they did um, agree to fund it out of the professional development costs. So that was very nice of them because I was 20 days after the deadline, they didn't need to do that. So I appreciate it. I have taken my first class and I passed my first test. Good job. <laughs> um, then they did also vote, um, they confirmed Kim's appointment with the salary increase for assistant library director. So I can, it's all official now. Kim is the assistant mm -hmm. library director. So that's also really great news. Um, when it came to the teen librarian position, I had, I had mentioned I had spoke to the chair uh, probably in like de late December, I think. And she had asked if we could wait until FY23 to put it in. So that was sort of, in this meeting that was kind of echoed, especially since we were not, um, we were not going to hire somebody in FY22. 
I will say it's probably more likely we will start looking seriously at hiring somebody in FY23. So I don't think there's any harm in waiting. Okay. They had a robust discussion about it. I, I think they weighed all the pros and cons of doing it now versus doing it later. Uh, you know, I know you guys wanted me to, to try to see if we could do it this year. And I, there just isn't, um, there was not a majority decision to do it this year. So we'll look at doing it in FY23 and we'll bring the request back if that's okay with all of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So the update. It, you won't see it in the town meeting warrant under the SAP article for this year, which is, we're not hiring anybody this year, so it's fine. All right. Any, any questions on that? No. Well, we're running down this agenda really fast. Um, any other business? Wait, one more thing. When I missed the line about you know, the salary increase. Is that something that happens now or is that going to be next fiscal year for Kim? No, Kim's salary increase happens now because the promotion, so the promotion is effective from the date that personnel board approves it. So yeah. last Wednesday. So Kim will get an inc a, a promotion increase as of last Wednesday. Terrific. Good job. Good. Which she's been doing the work. I know so, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> And there was, I will say, there was very little discussion. I think everybody knows Kim and how hard she works. So that was- Is she pleased? Was, Is she yes, pleased? she was very happy. And the next day we had a, a staff member, um, it was a, our part-time library technician who moved and um, she was very sad when she left. So I feel like Kim went through the whole gamut of emotions last week. She was really happy with her promotion and then really sad that we lost a staff member, so. Hmm. But in the long run, she'll be, she'll be good. Yeah. She'll be very, it'll be nice for her. Um, any other questions? Did we wanna? Are we on the budget? Yes, I think so. Because I know Janet's been waiting. I know. Well, we'll get. We're there now. Be patient. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. So yes. So do you guys have your copy of the the revised budget? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the only thing I'll note, I guess, is that educational supplies went down about $200 in this revised version. So it includes Kim's increase and promotion to assistant library director. So that's reflected in the salary. And what we did was there were three library technician positions. Now there are only two. So three in the last version of the budget, two in this version of the budget. And that basically equaled out. The technician made a little bit more than Kim's promotion. <laughs> and then we did increase really the, um, we had budgeted at a 2.5% increase for the staff, but personnel board approved um, a 2.8. So that was at the meeting prior to the one I was talking about. So we had to adjust the budget for that. And that was really why the educational supplies went down a little bit to sort of offset that cost. But we're still within the uh, state recommended 16%. So we're fine. So this budget doesn't include either of the requests from the town manager to reduce the budget. Correct. Okay. Did you get any if feedback? Looking we'd be looking at a 0.5% increase at the 14 and a half K cut. And then we'd, we'd actually have to, we'd, ha we'd have a pretty significant cut in the, um, the other version. Okay. Did you, what feedback did you get when you told them I, you wanna make a change? So I haven't communicated that. I was asked by Brian to send in a revised budget, but we had to have a discussion about it now. Okay. So if you guys want to talk about budget cuts, now would be the time. 
Nope. <laughs> yeah, I, I the sense I got from the last time, I think last meeting when we talked about the budget was that you didn't want to um, entertain any cuts. Is that that's, still correct? I think that's still yes, the case. That's correct. Yes. I don't think there's any fluff in here to cut. I know, Amy, you had asked about Skillshare um, and because that wasn't reflected on the statistics. So Skillshare is unique in that I have to manage authentications. So somebody makes a request on a Google form, and I actually have to manually enter it in. So we were going to reset those authentications every month, but we have we've basically have about two people a month who sign up for Skillshare. So I haven't revoked anyone's access because we still have the number of seats available. Oh, okay. So we hit, I would say, the 25 mark. That's when I need to start resetting authentications. And I'm coming up with a draft email that I'm going to send people that I, and I'm going to encourage them to re-sign up if okay. they'd like to uh, continue access. But the idea is the access won't be forever. It's, yeah. it's Skillshare is not set up to manage authentications. It's their only database vendor that isn't. Okay. So I figured if somebody signs up for it and they're using it and no one else. Yeah, that makes sense. At, why, why would we take the access away if it's not being utilized? I didn't know that. I just sent you a request again. So. <laughs> the main thing is I need to set up the form to notify me via email when someone signs up because I didn't set up the form that way. So I have to like remember every week to check it. And oh, I yeah, there's an easy little, you know how to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. It's super there's... easy. So I don't know why I didn't set it up. Well, Cause way. I, yeah, I had to do that with SCF and if I didn't get pinged, I just off my radar and then I'd miss it. So yeah, it's a good, nice feature. Ryan, just to be clear, did you say a few moments ago that the 2.8% salary increase across the board is, is, is as good as done? At this yes, so, that, so the budget that you got with this meeting that's in your documents, right. at the 2.8 increases for the staff is reflected in that budget. Wait, Ryan, I'm seeing 2.7. Is it possible I might be looking at an older one? Just got out of it. Sorry, Kim. No, that's okay. This the one I'm looking at was dated two fifteen in the corner. Yeah, it says two point seven. But that's the part time salaries going down. Yeah. So the two point seven is the overall amount. Mm -hmm. I, I see what you're seeing now. So 2.7 was the overall amount because one of the positions was taken out, the uh, technician position. There was a little bit of savings. I don't know the correct term, but we it, it's not reflective of a 2.8 overall because the technician position cost a little bit more than what Kim's promotion was. Oh, I see. So the 2.8 increase was applied for the permanent salaries and wages permanent yeah. line. Okay. And, and it's good you brought this up because we should say this in the meeting on, on the recording. Library pages are not subject to the increase rate. We do not uh, evaluate them. And so employees need to have an evaluation in order to get an increase. And because the pages have such a minimal role and they only work here, you know, we all agree that the pages are high school kids. So when they graduate, they kind of move on. Right, we are not um, considering um, them for the increases. They're only here for a year or two, usually. So, how much do you pay them? Eleven oh seven an hour currently. Is that the what the minimum wage is? It is not the the municipal. Oh, that's right. It's lower. Yep. Yeah. Uh, right. goes right. by the federal minimum wage rate. So if, if that is modified on the federal level, that has a, an effect on us. So we will see if that ends up happening. And um, I, I will say personnel boards doing a great job. They are looking at the compensation uh, charts every year now. I, I don't know in the past if they were on, on this level and they're increasing them as a result of um, 
sort of cost of living. So it's not just the, the individual rates of the employees that's being affected, it's the, it's the rate table. So yeah. that is making a big difference. So I can, I can tell you with the technicians, it, no, it was the associates. With the associates, we put them in that position and we paid them the minimum of the position. And then we had to readjust it because the table was adjusted and there was like a three cent differential. So they ended up getting three cents more an hour. I know we, we went crazy guys, um, but that, you know, it's, it's being looked at every year and then it's being adjusted, so. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense, Kim? The 2.7 though is because also it's, it's a little bit lower because of the pages. That's the other piece. Thank you. Thank you. Everything else is maintained in this. So the, I know that I brought up um, consumer reports. That's probably something I'm gonna ask you guys before I do it. Um, if I were to do it and it's not budgeted next year, there's nothing to preclude us from taking that amount out of educational supplies in another year. I would just let you know if we're doing that because we've tried to move all of the subscription costs over to the subscription line item. But if we don't budget for that, you know, it's mainly just shifting. It's like what we've done with the overages with dues and um, professional development is that we just need to make sure that the bottom line balances at the end of the year. And I promise you, I do that. Have you gotten a lot of requests for um, the Consumer Reports database or from your perspective, is it more to acquire that to fill a hole in our services? I think a significant amount of people have requested it. I know, I believe Mr. Litt is in the audience and he has been asking for this for a couple of years. Um, I think it is something that we should provide because especially since it's so difficult to access the physical magazine right now and we only get one issue. So often like the buyer's guide, if somebody takes yeah. the guide out, that's been unavailable. It's, Mr. Lid is also not the only person who's asked for it. We've, I, I would say requests for electronic databases are sometimes more sporadic. I think people don't know to ask for it, to engage me. So the Municipal Technology Committee is constructing a survey. I don't know if you guys have seen the survey. I think it's about 50 questions right now. Um, there is a page in the library and there is a question specifically about would you access consumer reports? So if they get data on that, they will share that with us. I have also thought about um, doing a survey, even something basic like on Twitter where we can just, you can set it up very quickly and then people can just respond to it. So I might say like, if we offered consumer reports online, would you access it? Yeah, okay. Mr. Litt has also noted in the chat that Consumer Reports has moved a lot of their material to the digital edition. Which, yeah, a lot yeah. of them are going that way. Like they're all like stuff you want to see. Oh, if you belong to our online thing, you can see it. Otherwise, too bad. So, because because the magazine is like a snapshot in time. Yeah. Too. So if they do like a car, uh, a like a car issue, they're only doing cars at that time. Right. With cars so the data gets updated every month so I think getting online access to it it's, it's basically the last thing I think that we we I would like to offer that we're not offering right now and I'm, I'm, that's famous last words I'm sure I'm gonna come out. Something else. <laughs> yeah or we're going to get additional requests but I think Mr. Litt asked about this something like two over two years ago and we've been exploring avenues to try to make it happen that entire time yeah how, how much does it cost right it's a, I want to say a little over a thousand dollars a year. Because I, I needed to look up something and signed up for it myself and it's been well over a year and I can't figure out how to get out of it, <laughs> but they only charge me $10 a month. Yeah. So it's, it's Mr. Litt did note that the, um, the individual memberships are much cheaper than the organizational yeah. membership because we have to go through EBSCO. So, I mean, if somebody really wanted this, you could make an argument that it's affordable, but I, I think the library should provide access to it so people wouldn't have to pay. It but, is a good service. Well, yeah. If I ever used it, it would be. <laughs> I, was buying I would say if we have 10 people use it a month, I have a feeling like we'd get at least 10 people using it a month. And then I feel like that kind of balances out as the cost. And the thousand dollars is an annual membership. It's not I was going to ask you, Ryan, on your uh, newsletters that you're doing, I 
just been talking to people in passing lately about the electronic databases and other things we have, and they are shocked that we have them. So are, are you going to keep like be beating that drum? Because everybody I've talked to has been like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you had X, Y, or Z. And, um, you know, like, I don't know that I'd have known all of them if I wasn't on the board and uh, was using JSTOR the other day. So um, I just, I don't know how we get it out there, but I think the more people just like this online consumer reports, if, if I had the option to do that rather than wait in line, you know, in a hold line for the buyer's guide or the car issue or something, I think people would jump at the chance. It's just, I don't know how we get it out there. Yeah, so we, I, I, I will toot the horn of one of your fellow trustees. So uh, Kim Regan has been working with Amy Townsley and um, we've, I've also worked with a little bit with Amy. We've constructed now a schedule through April that is going to highlight one of the electronic databases um, throughout the week. So I'm sure you saw that with um, I believe Help Now, which is the Twittering one, we are going to launch into the next database. Um, and we are actively engaging with some of the vendors on marketing resources that they can provide us. So you'll see some like custom images and stuff like that. So the work isn't going to end in April. <laughs> Just <laughs> trying not to freak Amy out. But like we need to, once we're done the initial marketing push, we just need to, we need to go again. Right. What, what we're trying to do is at the end of the week, we're trying to find like a fun thing, like something sort of esoteric about the database we think would attract a new user. Yeah. And that's kind of what the, um, you know, the beginning of the week is a little bit about what, here's what it is, here's what it can do, um, here's how people are using it now. And then the end is sort of like, you know, this is something that you could use that is really great. And you, you're probably not using it, but let's, here's something that will, Thank you. Right. That's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you, Kim, for doing this. Good. Good idea. Good marketing. Um, so any other things we want to talk about. Um, so the, the only thing I'll say is because I know we we've I, I'm the one who always takes you guys on a journey, a, a tangential journey away from uh what we're supposed to be talking about, but if you are, if you like the version of the budget um, that was submitted, I, if you guys vote and then approve it, I can send it to Brian. So I know he's anxious for that. So if, um, if you want to close discussion on that and then make a motion and take a vote. I'll move. Um, I can't make a motion, David. I think we're going to have Jane make the motion and then. Sorry, go ahead. If yeah, there's, Gina, no do more, it. there's no I like your enthusiasm though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If there's no more uh discussion on the budget, I move that we take a vote to accept it. Second. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Um Trustee Ackburn, <laughs> we're voting now. Do you vote to approve it? Who are you asking? Uh, David, asking you. Yes, I approve. Aye. Um Davis. Yes, I. Uh, Trustee Reagan. Aye. Ma Trustee Maney. Aye. Trustee Yazdani. Aye. Motion is, is approved. The revised budget is approved. Thank you. All right. So that was that was good. Any any other business that anyone would like to bring up while we're all together? I think I wanted to bring up. I know that my term is up um, this oh. year. Um, and I was just, I noticed on my Southboro, um, Beth had kind of um, summed up all of the, um, all of the, I guess, terms. So I, I guess there were more on the ballot this year than I thought. Um, it looks like there are openings for two three-year terms, one two-year term and one one-year term. Does that sound right to you guys? David, uh, aren't you on a one-year term? Oh, wait, you know what? I think so I'm I must, I must left be up for re-election because I only for the remainder of somebody else's sorry of their three-year term. So I, I'm I'm a one-year guy that I need to run again. Okay, sorry. I'm actually look. I'm, I just realized the date on this is for last year that came up. So I I think you Kim. It's it's my understanding is Kim 
and then you go for re election, and then David has to run for re election. Yes. Right. If, if you want to run for. I do. I do. Right. Yes. Yeah. Me too. So uh, I think, yeah, we just need to look up the time frame, but at least based on this article from last year that I didn't realize I was reading, um, I think we have until March to pull papers. Um, Get signatures. Yeah. And Mr. Mr. Litt was nice enough on the town of Southboro website. The the clerk lists the term dates, so you can always double. If you're wondering, if any of you are wondering when your term is expiring, you can always check the town's website. I wonder if they. I don't know what they did last year. I wonder if there's any way to not have to collect signatures in person. I mean, that seems like such a yeah. awful thing to do these days. Yeah, well, we had to do it a year ago when it was just getting started. Right. Well, yeah, we got it. It was due right before we locked down, if I recall. Right, Janet? Right. It's all Janet. Yeah, I don't remember being concerned at the point I was getting signatures. Yeah. It, yeah, it was getting close. I mean, yeah. I guess the transfer station is still open, but. Um, but that's, I mean, you could leave a table and stay way behind it and ask, but that's a. Yeah. It'd be really, and you're not going to be the only ones involved with this. There's a whole bunch of other people, including like the moderator who has to. And we can all sign, and our spouses can all sign to help. That'll get you. <laughs> Fortunately, there's not a huge amount needed. So, um, you know, I'm sure we will all help. I don't know if that's Mass General Laws. Maybe the governor can. Yeah. Should do it some, because that's really irresponsible to make all these people in all these towns go out and collect yeah. signatures. And we can sign di digitally for other things for, you know, like all yeah. the things we've been sent. So I don't know. I, I, you know what? I'll, I'll send an email to um, the town clerk and just see if they've heard of anything. Yeah. I know Jim has actively engaged with the state on trying to make things easier for the boys and yeah. counties in Southboro. So I'm sure if, if this is not something that's on their radar, um, you know, I don't think anybody knows how elections are going to run. I believe the town election is in May. If it might oh, it's like the fifth or seventh or something. Yeah. yeah. So that's we have a little bit of time in before you have to um, hopefully worry worry about this. But um, if if you need a space at the library outside, we can also provide that. Okay. Yeah. No, I was just trying to think of the time frame because I couldn't remember it. But it sounds like, um, you know. Dave and I might have to start earlier if we have to physically get the signatures from people. Please run for re-election, both of you. <laughs> I plan to. I will, I promise. <laughs> okay, um, anything else? All right, this is someone- I closed from our last meeting because we only had like, you know, we did it at the end of the month and then we do capital. And then um, I promise, I'm trying not to do any more joint meetings. <laughs> Where? That's all right. It was, it was worth going. It was interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, Ryan just promised when I, and that there was only one meeting a month, and I think there's been two ever since I started, but that's okay. <laughs> so when is next month? Oh. Um, oh, I can look that up. 16th again? Yeah, usually yeah. March and yeah, March and February are the same. So it's not right after a holiday weekend this time. So that'll or school vacation week for Kim and I. <laughs> uh, well, we can if you guys want to push it back. No, this week is no, school vacation. Week. Not today, next one. today is. Um, do we like doing it at eleven in the morning? Um, well, that was a change, wasn't it? Didn't we have it later? Noon is we when we did meeting. We used to do it at noon. Yeah, I, I think uh, that changes for me because I actually have a meeting for the next few months at one o'clock. So it, 11 on, the, on March 16th, if we could keep it at 11, that would be great. If sure. noon works better, I could do the week following, um, if you guys would rather. 11, 11, for me. 11? I think 11, okay. well, it's okay for me if I know in advance anyway. Okay, thank um, you. How about you, Ryan? It's, it's good for me. I think I think it motivates us all to get done by lunchtime, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little hungry. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, um, can I move to adjourn? I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Um, all those in favor? David Eckberg. Aye. Janet Maney. Aye. Kim Reagan. Aye. Amy Yazdani. Aye. And Jane Davis out of order. Uh, aye.
Okay, the meeting's adjourned at 11.52 a.m. Well, is that a record? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I did swear, a in the future, we will have hour-long meetings. It's <laughs> always my fault. It's a challenge. <laughs> we have, what, hopefully two, two more months of construction? Like, I'm, I'm, I like Mary. I'm excited when she's not going to be in our meetings anymore. <laughs> so... Hey Thank Kim, one all. last question. Do you do you and I need to negotiate with respect to what kind of a term we are going to be running for? No, it'll be three. Always three. Or yeah. three years. Yeah, so, you'll be on a normal cycle from now on. Okay. Yeah, so, you just picked up you, someone you else's say. remainder of his term, her term. Okay. Yeah. The only. So I'm not the crowding only anybody they, out if I run for a three-year term. Then. No, you're not. You're yeah. staying. So okay. the only reason there were shortened terms, David, is because there were members of the board who resigned. Right. I understand. Different term limits, but okay. a standard term for a trustee is for three years. So Got that's the, the, we should note. That's what you're signing up for if you run for election. So I got it. Don't, don't stress that, Ryan. He's already said he's going to run. Yeah. <laughs> don't push it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. It's good to see you all. Take care. Have a great month. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. See you more, Ryan.